Six minutes starts now. To the dreamers, it could be a nightmare. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. All I want is to contribute back to this country. She was at a rally in California, one of several nationwide, supporting illegal immigrants brought here as kids, protected by an Obama program that President Trump plans to end. An announcement expected this morning. Fox's John Decker live at the White House. The White House plans to delay enforcement of the president's decision for six months, giving Congress a window in which to work on a legislative fix. But House Speaker Paul Ryan said he didn't think the president should terminate DACA which grants work permits to undocumented immigrants who arrived in the country as children. Approximately 800,000 undocumented immigrants are benefiting from DACA. Those so-called dreamers could be deported if Congress fails to pass an immigration bill by next March. Dave? Now, John, Congress returns today from its long summer break. DACA joins a long list of issues, including passing a budget, raising the debt limit, tax reform, and nearly $8 billion in disaster aid for Texas. More than 100,000 homes were flooded. Some still are in the Houston area. I'm going to let this swampy water sit for a month in my house, and it'll contaminate everything upstairs, too. I'm, I'm incensed that they're not letting us in to take care of our homes when we had no warning. Now, her home was flooded when water was let out of reservoirs to protect the downtown. Hurricane Harvey's blamed for at least 60 deaths. And here comes Irma. The update just out makes it a Category 5 hurricane with 175 mile an hour wind. Warnings are out for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Florida could also take a hit. There is the potential for this to go into the Gulf of Mexico. This, there is the potential for this to hug along the coast. Again, we're five days out and we still have to add the potential for error. Fox meteorologist Janice Dean, people in Florida getting ready, buying water, batteries, and doing other storm preparations. Fox News, fair and balanced. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. If you're in the market to buy a home right now, you know how challenging it is out there. You're competing against cash buyers, so it's critical that you work with a reputable, established mortgage company like Quicken Loans. By getting pre-approved with us, sellers will know that you're serious and ready to close when you make that offer. Here's one more way to get the home you want. You could buy a $150,000 home with as little as $1,500 down with our 1% down payment option. The rate today on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 3.9%. APR 4.19%. For seven years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation for customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. And for the fourth year in a row, they've also ranked us highest in the nation for mortgage servicing. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to quickenloans.com. That's 800-QUICKEN. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. We are keeping a close watch on Hurricane Irma, a powerful Category 4 storm and intensifying as it approaches the Caribbean islands. People have been hunkering down ahead of the storm's arrival tonight. Anyone who is forecasting landfall in the U.S. is getting way ahead of themselves. Meteorologist Dan Zero says Irma bears watching. It is a monster storm, but any prediction of where and when it might hit the U.S. is irresponsible. Rutgers sociologist Lee Clark is highly critical of development in flood-prone areas. He says this recent disaster in Houston from Harvey, the latest example of how society keeps doing the wrong thing over and over. Talking about changing the incentives for people to build in dangerous places. And an order by then-President Obama against building in floodplains was revoked by President Trump just a few weeks ago. Police are still sorting out what happened in Asbury Park when a gay rights activist was pepper-sprayed by a man who was apparently yelling at a group of protesters. 22-year-old Morris May was arrested, but he has not been charged with a hate crime. I'm Eric Scott. This is the Town Square News Network. Sun and clouds as we belatedly start the work week here in New Jersey. Many kids going back to school as well. And it'll be quite warm by the peak of the day, mid to upper 80s. Later on, there's a chance for a stray shower or thunderstorm, leading to the possibility of some scattered storms tonight, and those becoming quite likely by tomorrow. But for tonight, lows into the mid to upper 60s, then it won't get much warmer than that. Highs in the lower 70s for Wednesday, and even with the rain ending Wednesday night and partly cloudy skies Thursday, temperatures stay there. I'm Patrick Lavery. From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. 
Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Chuck Malamud is here. He is our official financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. This is all about your financial matters with Chuck Malamud in our 26th year together doing this program every Tuesday morning in the 8 o'clock hour. Chuck is the managing director. He leads his team, the Malamut Group, at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office. And in fact, I received a beautiful email over the weekend from a brand new client of Chuck's. I didn't even have a chance to tell Chuck about this, uh, that said that he was, quote unquote, I could pull up the email, so impressed with Chuck on air that he moved his retirement accounts Uh, to Chuck and his team. The following program that you're about to listen to is presented by Chuck, a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. The information, views, and opinions expressed on this broadcast are those of Chuck Malamut. They do not necessarily reflect those of Morgan Stanley or its affiliates. They are current as of the date of this broadcast and are subject to change without notice. Neither the information provided nor any opinion expressed herein constitutes a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, member SIPC. Chuck, great to see you, my man. Good morning, Harry. So you didn't think I was paying attention to this morning? Oh, I did. You texted in yes, and I was very grateful. Uh, Chuck, uh, you don't know. This just sometimes I crack myself up when I was saying the new norm. Chuck, are you listening? Chuck, the new norm: three percent GDP. Now I know we're going to get to that. Um, probably item number four on your lengthy list of at least five items that we're going to cover. And let me turn it over to you with today's market update. So, Harry, we went through. You know, if you remember the beginning of August, we one of the comments that we made is that August traditionally is not a very a uh, very good month in the market. Uh, and <clears throat> lo and behold, as we got to the end, and we can talk about this um, <clears throat> as we get into the show, but the if, if you take a look at the averages, you know, for the month of August, it, the S&P closed with a fractional monthly gain of 0.05%. Wow. After a gain of 1.93% in the month of July. So... Uh, we we eked through a very very uh, you know cha- it was a challenging month. I mean there was a lot that was that was going on and and as much that was going on it was still a very quiet month. As much that earnings were pretty much um, you know all reported. A lot of people on vacation, not terribly focused on on what was going on within the market, and um, so. Now we're hearing, you know, as, as you know, uh, September traditionally is, is the worst month of the year for the equity market. So I guess, um, you know, hopefully we can mark some time here and get through the month of September and hopefully be somewhat unscathed. Chuck, uh, the August jobs report, we had initially reported because it was accurate and it was all we had at the time. We, we advertised the ADP, I think it was, number that came out. But the actual government number that came out was slightly lower. Yeah, so ADP, Harry, again, had a very good number for, you know, for the month. Uh, but, you know, history typically shows – uh, that August, again, one of the slowest months of the year for, for new hires. And this August, there was absolutely no exception. You know, U.S. non-farm payrolls rose less than expected. Um, and we had a unemployment rate of 4.4%. And 156,000 jobs created versus an estimate of 180,000. So the unemployment rate did move, you know, up uh, fractionally um, to 4.4 versus 4.3. I, I think probably what was more disappointing in the in, during the report, not so much August, because again, anything can happen in one month. But the fact of the matter is that payrolls for the prior two months were lowered by a combined uh, 41,000. Now, one of the things that you and Kirk spoke about and we I think mentioned this as we got into our discussion last week the um, August Institute for Supply Management Manufacturing Index reached a six six year high of 58.8 up from 56.3 so when you look at that number any time that we're over that 50 number indicates that there's there's growth 
in 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 yeah. obviously GDP. Chuck, here's another number, and I'm just going to throw it out because it's it's intellectually honest. There's about fifteen thousand less federal government employees since the new president has taken office. He's not filling a lot of positions. So if you put those numbers in there, uh, and who knows, maybe other reports just take for granted that government numbers never go down. Uh, that's a pretty big drop in terms of it, it federal is, but, but, positions. But I think, again, Harry, what we have to uh, be cognizant of the fact is that, you know, one month doesn't make a number. And, and I'm I'm really, really surprised that we didn't hear much more out of it other than you, you, you sit there at 830 on Friday and you wait for the number to come. Uh, Mike and I sat there and we were kind of in disbelief that we, for, you know, it was pretty interesting because one of the, the fake news networks. <laughs> that I, I, I like the way you said that. That, that, will, that will leave unnamed um, sends a flash across your phone. You get the flashes yeah. all the time. Yeah. And the updates and the breaking news. And they, they posted a number that one of the commentators was predicting. At uh, two hundred and fifteen thousand, and I, I, I'm standing there next to Mike, and I'm, I'm saying, Mike, uh, they haven't announced the number yet. I'm watching the TV. We're watching television, mm-hmm. and we, we, and and he has his cell phone. I said, Mike, this number is not even reported yet, and so sometimes there, you know, you get that delay, maybe thirty seconds, maybe upwards of a minute, and all of a sudden, bang, the number comes, and it was. Again, significantly lower than the two hundred and fifteen or twenty thousand that they initially posted, and they came back at one fifty six, and then they they one hundred fifty six thousand, and they retracted. Obviously, the yeah, the, the the breaking news that breaking was incorrect. News. Here's what I think, though, Chuck. I think the reason why the markets yawned at this, there has been steady job creation for the past eight months. It's been very, very solid. It's been very, very good. More than a million jobs in total created. So the difference between if it was expected to be 176 or 180 something and it comes in at 156 for one month, I just don't think our markets uh, decided to hemorrhage over that. Well, Harry, I think the other thing that's happening is, as I mentioned, the, the, that indicator uh, at, 50, at 58.8, the ISM number, also signals that you not only have growth here in the U.S., but you're seeing it in throughout the developed world, uh, suggesting that they're, they're, the synchronized global economic upturn remains intact as we get through you know the latter part of this year. Chuck, I want to go to um, gasoline prices because when the severity of Har- Hurricane Harvey was was being projected, and it lived up to it, to the worst scenario billing. There was a belief that the the interruption to refinery and the things that would happen between Texas and Louisiana, uh, I don't think anything has happened that wasn't expected, that it would go up between 15 to 25 cents. I remarked to you that it initially went up in that range. Now it's gone up another 25 cents. So we see the difference here, and again, I'm, I'm basing it. I know that somebody that gets it from a big box store, it's a few pennies cheaper than what I'm about to say. But my corner store, Chuck, went from 223. That would, of course, include the 23 cent uh, state new tax increase. So 223. Now it's 275.9 as of this morning. I don't want to call out gouging, but I did not expect the price of a gallon of regular gasoline to go up by more than 50 cents. Well, well, Harry, I, I saw actually this morning um, 260 versus 230 a week ago versus 215, you know, roughly roughly a year ago. So, you know, if you think about it, Harry, 23% of the U.S. refiner capacity is, you know, going into the weekend was offline because of all the flooding in the in the wake of, you know, Hurricane Harvey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the na- so nationally, gasoline prices, you know, at that point in time, had increased by roughly seventeen cents a gallon. I expected that, um, and to an average price of about two forty-five. But we, you know what happened? You were in the middle of the Labor Day weekend. Um, a lot of driving. I, I'm not going to suggest that. Well, let, let me rephrase this. What I'm going to say is that 
Uh, typically, prices move up quickly hmm. in basically anything, uh, any commodity, we'll call it. And, and it, it's kind of slow to move back down. Which is, to me, is corrupt. I mean, if there's a reason, such as you're saying, and I totally am a buyer of this, that it's understandable, 23% loss of refinery capacity, but they started raising the price of a gallon of gas that was already in the ground at the gas station that they had already received, you know, prior to any interruption of supply. And I, when I saw the first 25 cents, at first it was 10 then it was about another 15. I thought this is exactly what Chuck and I talked about and what the, the analysts were saying, 15 to 25 percent or cents. Now it's over 50 cents. I know you're seeing 260. I promise you at the corner of Ocean Heights and Zion Road, it is 275.9 as we speak. More from Chuck Malamut right after the break. It's 16 minutes past the hour. It's Hurley in the morning presenting Chuck Malamut, your, my official financial advisor. Do as a listener of the program did just in the past month or so, maybe maybe less than that, just wrote me over the weekend saying he was so impressed by listening to Chuck Malamut that he moved all of his retirement accounts to Chuck Malamut. 609-383-2010 for the Malamut Group at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office, 609 609- 383-2010, a full-service financial services team that can help you with every aspect of your financial investing, college building, vacation planning, retirement, every aspect of your portfolio. At Ocean First Bank, our first thought is you. We put you first in all we do. Community banking for a century. We treat you like your family. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. If your dreams include a spring makeover, now's the perfect time to think about a home equity line of credit from Ocean First Bank. From home improvement projects to paying off debt or finally booking that dream vacation, we're offering a great low rate for your big plans. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Opportunity Lender. Politics has become a contact sport. Two parties, two teams, taking sides, blocking, tackling, knocking each other down. Chris Brown doesn't play that game. Chris has a record of serving our country, earning the Bronze Star, and he works in a bipartisan way to benefit our families. Listen to Chris Brown. The only side I take is yours, even if it means taking on my own party. I fought the special interest to stop North Jersey casinos, and I opposed Chris Christie's takeover of Atlantic City. Chris Brown's been endorsed by working families, Democrats, and Republicans across Atlantic County because he's always Always on our side. Like when Comar Manufacturing was about to leave New Jersey, Chris Brown went to work with Buena Vista's Democratic mayor, earning his thanks for protecting 400 jobs in Atlantic County. As your senator, the only team I'll be on is yours. Proven, independent, trusted. Chris Brown for Senate. Paid for by Chris Brown for Senate. Hi, it's Mark Levin. Join me at 6 this evening. Now back to the mayor of the morning, Harry Hurley, on WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. I want to thank John for writing in, uh, and not that Chuck was a doubter at all. He he believed what I said. He just, in his area, it's a little bit less. Um, and usually ours does not go like a full dime. This would be nine cents more or so. But um, I want to thank John for taking a picture of exactly the area that I was just speaking about. Two seventy five point nine. Yeah, well, Harry, think about this for a second. So, you know, twenty three percent of the capacity was offline as we got into the weekend. So, the the capacity is coming back online. Hundred and eighty billion dollars is the number that I heard is the estimate of the potential loss that was incurred as a yeah. result of of Harvey. Yep, significantly higher than every other national disaster hurricane that we've had to date. Um, and the fact of the matter is that the market has done a, a pretty remarkable job 
uh, taking all this news in stride. I mean, over 50 inches. Imagine 50 inch. Can you imagine 50 inches of rain, Harry, what that would be around here? Well, if it happened here, it, it, I mean, we'd, it would, we'd be underwater. The barrier um, island would be gone. You know, the municipal securities around the Houston area, you know, have not been heavily impacted. Uh, the bonds of the companies in the insurance and energy-related industries have not been impacted as well. Uh, and the fact that you, you saw what's happened in the equity markets uh, with a not-so-great employment number for the month of August, Friday, the market was up. Now, today, you know, we off off yesterday, the European markets traded. I mean, you and Kirk spent a fair amount of time talking about North Korea. Um, you, you would have thought for a minute that the markets would be, you know, selling off, uh, you know, 100 plus, 150, 200 plus points in the Dow. And right now, Harry, again, pre-market, that's not happening. I heard, see if you buy into this, and I want I want to say this um, as dispassionately as possible because obviously it's heartbreaking what happened. It's unimaginable what happened. Nobody could even imagine for five straight days or whatever it was just taking 52 plus inches of rain. But I heard a really wise financial person say the size of our economy is so big that even an event of this magnitude is is a blip on the radar screen. And in fact, there's no doubt, uh, obviously, stores, ma stores, and even chain stores and things that are flooded out and things like that may close forever or close until, you know, the rebuild. But this spending is still going to take place because people are going to be rebuilding. So the same they, amount of spending, and in fact, you can make the case more spending is going to, and again, I, I say this because we're doing a financial program. This is this is not to minimize or be um, inconsiderate. You know, it, I'm saying it just dispassionately in terms of if we were only looking at a financial balance sheet and not dealing with loss of human life, which is incalculable, and the devastation and everything that everybody's gone through. So with that, and I'm not doing that to be safe. I'm doing that to be decent. With that disclaimer, Chuck, I think what I said is true. Harry, I think your your statement, you know, is in fact accurate. There will be spending. It's going to, I think the net the net wealth effect, you know, for those living around the Houston area, um, you know, are going to be somewhat seriously impacted think about if i if i heard and saw correctly harry 25 percent of the homes uh that were destroyed from the hurricane had flood insurance and the flood insurance that they had for the most part was pretty much ina- inadequate you know to to rebuild those homes so kind of fast forward it all right so what does a homeowner do you know they have a mortgage for the most part um, they are now, I hate, I don't want to use the word underwater, but technically and, and realistically they are underwater. Mm. Do they walk from their home? Do they go out and uh, what does that do to their credit report? Does it wreck their credit because they're not paying on a mortgage on a house that doesn't exist anymore? You know it well. There's no special carve out that says, oh my gosh, you had a disaster so we don't report you. Chuck, people that have their car destroyed if they don't keep making payments and say they didn't have insurance. If they don't keep making payments, that goes right on their report. There's no special car out. So, you know, obviously we've seen, we've seen FEMA uh, act, um, I think, pretty uh, very professionally, Harry, and, and the fact of the matter is that it seems as if um, they were a lot more organized and, you know, working through the process a lot more efficiently than what happened at you know with Hurricane Katrina, you know it seems like that was you know years and years and years ago. But you're not watching and seeing and hearing, um, you know, on a comparative basis, everything that happened, you know, the last time we were in this sort of sort of you know uh, hurricane disaster mode. Well, if you look at Hurricane Superstorm Sandy, the most recent that was about seventy billion dollars. Um, you know, you know what we saw. We saw people that had their homes completely destroyed. We saw people that had their homes significantly damaged. I, I know a good friend of mine, and I saw him as recently as a couple of days after he finally moved in. It took him over five years to move back into his home, Chuck. This is this is what people are going to deal with. They're going to just deal with 
unimaginable issues. And just imagine, Chuck, I don't know how exactly how many, but I'll bet you it's in the tens of thousands. Imagine the people that got wrecked at Katrina moved to Texas and got wrecked again. And, and, and I've heard of some... And it happened. Yeah, and I've heard of some circumstances where people had left New Jersey and they went to Texas. Yeah. And after, after you know, to get away from, from the shore, so to speak, and moving from the Jersey Shore to, you know, not far from Houston per se. But I think you're going to find that pretty much anywhere, Harry. And, and um, you know, the, the bottom line, um, this is, as we all know, and we're not reporting anything that your listeners haven't heard, this is going to take, it's going to take a lot of years. I mean, you know, the relief is there, the help is there, uh, financially the dollars are there, at least initially. But the question is, is, that, is that what, what happens yeah. You know, six months, a year, eighteen months from now. That's really the question we have to you, deal with. You don't talk about one particular stock, but I'm gonna throw out two obvious big box stores, Home Depot and Lowe's, for example. Is that a big enough event, that kind of billions of dollars worth of property damage where actually that entire industry is lifted up? I think the industry, you know, Harry, my initial reaction is yes, but then again, not significantly. Uh, because you would have seen, those stocks move uh, as the event was unfolding. And the, the, f- the fact of the matter is that, and I think you said it just a few minutes ago, it's, it's a pretty insignificant number, you know, versus our domestic economy. And then compare that to what's happening globally. Sort of maybe, I, I, I don't... You, it's sort of a blip on the radar, is what I'm trying to say, and, and I don't want to, and I don't want to say that in a bad way, Harry, or in a, or an obnoxious way, but but it, it's it really is not going to make much of a difference as to what the markets perceive that will be happening over you know the next six months to a year. Chuck, we're going to take a brief time out. Coming right back, you're listening to the official financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program, and he'll still be talking about things such as GDP, which has been revised upward. Is it? Is it indeed? Because Chuck was listening in the 6 o'clock hour, I confirmed. Is it indeed the new norm? Is it indeed the new norm? We will find out in just a few minutes. Also, tax reform, which obviously is a very, very big deal. This is timely, obviously, with what we're talking about with Hurricane Harvey, with this um, very, very, I mean, just tragic if we were to get a one-two punch. But do keep in mind, this is the peak of the hurricane season. Right now, if you're going to get hurricanes, and we've been very fortunate for about a decade, with the exception of a few um, occasions, obviously Superstorm Hurricane Sandy, uh, but there has been very little active, harsh hurricane activity for the entire country for a number of years, for the most part. Uh, we might pay for it if we have a very active hurricane season this year. Right now, Hurricane Irma is approaching Cuba, I believe. It's in the Caribbean, and it is now, I thought it was a Cat 4. It was a Category 4 when I signed on. Bob Progner told me about an hour ago. It's now a Category 5, and if you look at the cone of uncertainty, one of the trends and uh, forecast models has it hitting Florida. In the possibility that that could be the case, Governor Rick Scott of Florida has actually declared a state of emergency for all counties in Florida. That's how significant this could be, a statewide state of emergency. And you think about that, that is extremely unusual. Governor Christie did the same thing for Superstorm Sandy, but that's very, very rare. Usually you would handpick the counties that would be in the um, in the lane of, of possibility. Well, here it's the whole state. And this brings me to America's public adjuster, the official, the exclusive public adjuster for the Hurley in the Morning program. And tomorrow at 8.05, Sandy Fisher will be here. The timing, I hate to say this, I mean, in the best way, not the worst way, uh, couldn't be better in terms of Sandy being able to share with you such things as, can you imagine how many public adjusters are en route to the Houston, Texas area, for example, as we speak? I mean, it's it's almost incalculable. Uh, Billions and billions of dollars worth of devastation and property damage. So if there's an impending storm or possibly a hurricane on the way, which still the East Coast is on one of these different models, 
where even the New Jersey coast could get hit. Hopefully that's not the case, and it looks like from the models I've been looking at that 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 is not the case, but it is still a possibility, and certainly Florida in its sight. So if the next storm or hurricane causes you to have a fire, water damage, roof damage, tree hitting your home, or any number of examples, America's Public Adjuster can help you right away with immediate response because at America's Public Adjuster, Sandy and his team, You'll always get 24-7 live service, never an answering machine. At America's Public Adjuster, your care is their first priority. They're committed to advocating on your behalf, never for the insurance companies. They know how to deal with the insurance companies, their adjusters and agents, their issues, and they do all of the paperwork necessary to get you your claim settled properly. You'll have no paperwork hassles, no frustrations. Their adjuster stays with you for the entire process. They make sure that you are protected if you've had a fire, water damage, roof damage, any type of event where you've had damage to your home. Call America's Public Adjuster right now. Let them make that first call to your insurance company, not you. And that's not an insult. We wouldn't want you to say the wrong thing. It's not about misrepresenting. It's about you could innocently say something inaccurate that would potentially doom your case. 609-772-0789. See how Sandy can help. Let their experts at America's Public Adjuster, with their many years of experience, handle all aspects of lost recovery. They will get your insurance company to make your recovery less painful. And here's the caveat. Here's the guarantee. If they don't recover, their services are free. You will only pay if you recover. They're here to help. And in most all cases, America's public adjuster can exceed your expectation. Call 609-772-0789 or visit Sandy and the team at America's Public Adjuster on the World Wide Web at americaspublicadjuster.com. No apostrophe, just America's Public Adjuster. Here's where I'll be Saturday night. The pageantry, the excitement, and the shoes. WPG Talk Radio 104.1 is celebrating the Miss America competition in the world's playground. And we invite you to tune in Saturday, September 9th at 5 as we broadcast the annual Show Us Your Shoes Parade. Live from Capriccio at Resorts Casino Hotel. We have your front row seat Saturday evening, September 9th at 5 on WPG Talk Radio 104.1 and WPGTalkRadio.com. We treat people well. Shore Physicians Group. Shore Physicians Group is proud to include rheumatology among its medical specialties, allowing you to seek diagnosis and treatment for arthritis and other disease that can affect your joints, muscles, and bones. Shore Physicians Group rheumatologists Dr. Linda Brecker and Anna Serlusu are board certified in internal medicine and rheumatology. Together, these expert practitioners bring fellowship training and a highly personalized approach to the people they care for. Shore Physicians Group is accepting new patients at its Summers Point and Marmor offices. Most insurance plans are accepted. For a rheumatology appointment, call 609-365-6200 or visit shorephysiciansgroup.com. That's 609-365-6200 or shorephysiciansgroup.com. Shore Physicians Group, treating people well. Hey, wake up with Harry Hurley and drive home with me, Sean Hannity, 3 to 6. It's all happening here on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. With Chuck Malamut, this is our Tuesday morning, all about your financial matters, starring Chuck Malamut, our 26th year together on the program, uh, doing this uh, very important hour of programming. Chuck is the managing director, leads his team, the Malamut Group at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office for all of your financial planning needs. Call Chuck at 609-383-2010, 609-383-2010. I've been very excited about agenda item number four. I'll call it Quattro. Um, very excited about it because you and I debated, not, not that you disagree, but we debated <sighs> the concept of the new norm when we were growing fractionally or barely above a percent or something just awful compared to the entire history of America uh, in terms of gross domestic products, otherwise known as uh, – uh, you know, GNP, the um, gross or GD, GDP, the gross domestic product 
rows. It was adjusted yeah. upward. And this is another thing that I've noted over the past eight months, Chuck. All the numbers for the past number of years in the recent past were always seemingly adjusted downward. It always made me feel like there was even dishonesty going on. Uh, now the numbers keep getting adjusted upward. In other words, we're doing better than we thought, not worse than we thought. Even if it's not crooked, always doing worse than you thought is is a terrible thing. So it got whatever it was, 2.7, got you know upwardly um, adjusted to 3.0. And hence, Chuck, for one beautiful quarter, we hit again the 3% GDP. So, Harry, uh, you stole my thunder. <laughs> Pocket Kreskin moment. But, but- uh, but if you, if, if you look at the the so the U.S. economy did grow at a three percent annual rate uh, in the second quarter. It, the the revision was upward from the. From, Sorry, from, that's, a, that's a rational exuberance. Joke. Okay, so Greenspan. it was a two point six percent that was initially reported in July. So spending by both consumers and businesses, Harry, in the second quarter. Uh, we're, we're robust. And if you look at it, you know, capital expenditures uh, expanded at almost at a 9% rate. And that's, the f- uh, and that's the fastest that we've seen in the last two years. In the meantime, corporate profits also rose by roughly 8% at the same time. So w- w- what is happening, uh, y- you've seen uh, the second quarter revision upward, and then on Fridays, as Kirk mentioned and, and we mentioned earlier today, the, that ec- the economic indicator, um, the ISM that came across at 58.8, Harry, you need to pay attention and stop your multitasking because what I'm going to tell you okay. right now, you're going you're gonna to really need to absorb. Oh, thank you, and thank you for calling me out. Uh, because I, I, I want you to be fully you. focused thank you. what I'm going to say now. So the economic report released on Friday, um, you know, basically, and I think overshadowed what was happening with non-farm payrolls, the GDP gains, uh, you know, we th- I've seen one analyst come out and, and, and banging the table saying that excess gains of in excess of 4% for the third quarter. So, what am I doing? So Josh? you're banging the table, yes! Harry. So um, there is a, a very, very strong possibility that you know if the, the trends from ISM continue, then what would happen is that imagine for a minute the new norm would be at that three percent number. Woo! Which I said how many years ago that this was Abby normal. This has never in American history been the way it is. And then I had all these people telling me it's the new normal. Just things. No, no, it's not the new normal. It's the it's the abnormal. And in the second quarter of a new president, we're back to three. Incidentally, I'm very curious about the, the concept of banging the table because I always use the expression an attorney when they have no facts. When they have the facts, they bang the facts. When they have no facts, they bang the table. Usually banging the table is an empty wagon. But I like it for this analogy. And, Chuck, that would be that would be stellar, interplanetary stellar, if 3% sort of was the low benchmark and we could do even better than that. But here's what I do know. We, we even pondered on your show at one time. We, I posed the question one day. I said, Chuck, will we ever see 3% GDP ever again? I mean – at the, the way we're governing now, it, it's impossible. Uh, we now know that we can and that we did. We, we can, we did, and Harry, I think we'll continue to do so. And, and, and it's, it's, again, uh, you, you think about what has happened in the equity markets, you know, the, the Dow Jones, the S&P, the NASDAQ. And I think what's really encouraging is what's happening, you know, not only here domestically but also internationally. I mean, we've – you know, we have seen some f- pretty significant uh, significant gains year to date. And if and I think we mentioned this either last week or the week before, if we kind of mailed it in for the rest of the year, I, I don't think anybody would be terribly unhappy. And I How think I think the biggest concern that, that all of us have is, you know. You just don't want to give back. Exactly. Yeah. Is the market in a, in a position where it's going to pull back? Um, I would have thought for sure, uh, Harry, that, you know, everything happening with, with North Korea would have had a a major impact in the markets. Now, 
Yesterday, the international markets traded, most traded down. Today, most international markets are up. You know, we're pay- playing a little bit of catch up. The, S- the futures are down you know, 50, 60 in the Dow. So that is, you know, it's basically nothing to speak of. But I, I, Chuck, I, in, ter- in terms of geopolitical issues that used to cause markets to go down, in days gone by and in the many different eras, that we've done your show over the past 26 years, the saber rattling of Kim Jong Un would have rattled markets, I think, as recently as 10 or 12 years ago, maybe even more recent than that. Uh, but because now the media and the way they report everything, I think almost now it will actually take an event in order to have a major impact. Uh, Harry, I. Not I, just talking about I, it. I, I agree with you. And I mean, it was, you know, I, I think that, you know, the. The first news that comes across, you know, is how do you act or react to it? And then you, as you get more news, you, you get back to that, you know, standard operating procedure. I mean, think about it, Chuck. This guy's lighting off intercontinental ballistic missiles, and it's not affecting markets. It's pretty amazing. Well, I guess they're, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to think, try to think of how our president and what he's thinking about, but – Obviously, we there seems well, to be a fair amount of stability here. Yeah, and also in spite of everything that's happening, peace through strength. I mean, he he announced that the United States of America is scrapping the previous policy of a certain weight of a warhead. In other words, you're lighting off intercontinental ballistic missiles. You launch something over Japan. You know, you're you're now trying to go the route of you know testing now hydrogen bombs and and all this. So the president, I believe, has shown peace through strength by saying, all right, well, we're scrapping the warhead weight limit uh, as these tensions escalate. And I think that I think it's working. Harry, I, I think it is. And, and um, you know, we're, you know, we had we come off of the long weekend. Um, everybody in a sort of celebratory mood, you know, you know, everybody's lives are getting back to normal here, at least everywhere except in the in the Houston area, so to speak. Um, as you mentioned, you know, not too long ago, you know, now we were bracing for something potentially happening, you know, a, a, a rather impactful storm, um, Irma. Uh, Category and, and, five and, hurricane at the moment. And the, the fact of the matter is that we just, we just keep moving on. Now, it's, Florida, though, if Florida took a Category 4 hurricane, because I don't know that by the time it would hit land – fall it would still be category five but if it took a three or a category four hurricane the coast of florida that would be that would be very very bad news on top of what's happening in texas what's happening in louisiana uh that would be a lot that'd be a lot for our whole government to bear because obviously the um the American Red Cross and all the different you know the military and everybody that's involved in these things they would be spread very thin Absolutely. So keep your fingers crossed, Harry, and hopefully... We'll know in a few days. The, not, the five turns into a serious. two or kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm being very, you know... I'm keeping my fingers crossed, Harry. Chuck, on the last item on your list, and if there's anything else, the time is yours. You can always stay. You know that. We always leave the, um, the, the last 10 minutes uninterrupted in case you have more that you want to share on a given Tuesday. We don't book that typically. Let me ask you this one, though, because I know it's on your list and it's tax reform. I believe this is one that would rock markets because our markets, if they have, you'll know this term better than I will, if they haven't already built it in, it is is all but built in that there was a promise to address tax reform, to improve corporate taxation, to improve uh, individual tax rates and things like that. If they don't get this done, I believe that would be very injurious to our markets. So, you know, Harry, as you know, last week, President Trump traveled to Missouri and he, you know, made his grandstand a- appearance and, you know, to, you know, sort of, you know, talk about a number of things, one, including, you know, tax reform or overhauling, you know, our U.S. tax code. So he may, and I, I'm, what he said was this is a once in a generation opportunity to reshape the complex u.s tax system and think about harry when was the last time we've done any sort of tax reform reagan yeah so so but what happened was you know uh, president trump offered very few specifics 
with respect to uh, what the plan was with respect to tax reform other than, other than lowering taxes for lower and middle class Americans and, cor- and taking the corporate tax rate you know, down to 15%. Um, and again, you think about it, the comment, and I agree with it, he's going to create, this will create jobs. Yep. And it will increase wages. But but the flip side is if they if Congress, because, look, they're not at 8% approval for no reason. They're, they're really paralyzed right now, not getting anything important done that the American people want, seemingly focused on all the wrong things. If they don't deliver tax reform, that is well, different than everything else that we've talked but about. Think about this. I think, you know, I think realistically tax reform is sort of an uphill battle. You have a, a legislative calendar that is packed. You know, you got the debt ceiling that's got to be dealt with. And you realize I they have about it, 12 days left in their whole <laughs> session? Yeah, and, and I think— 12 days. And, uh, you know, I think that the, they will raise the debt ceiling. They have to. Um, and, and, by the way, it gets complicated because some of them are advocating raising the debt ceiling with emergency funding for Texas included in it. I think— they should separate that and they, do clean. They, they need to separate it, Harry. But, but you watch. Watch these these animals. So, you ha- so again, you have you, you have the debt ceiling that has to be dealt with. You know, health care is sort of, you know, falling off the table or the, falling by the wayside, so to speak. Y- y- again, a lot of discussion is going to be held around what happened in the Texas Gulf Coast area. Yep. So, I, I mean, I'm not a betting guy, so to speak, but um, it's, go, it's going to be very, very challenging to get this done here's something in they a wo- short period of time. I agree with you, Chuck, and here's something they won't get away with. Remember, the president came to Brigantine two, two days after Superstorm Sandy. I applauded it on air. I applauded it on my social media platforms, on, on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and said I'm proud of my president, proud of my governor, all wonderful. It took Congress five to six months to get the funding together five to six months now we won't tolerate that kind of garbage anymore so i don't think they're going to get away with that but just so everybody understands when you hear somebody like a president say we're going to be with you every step of the way we got a special phone number you can call where somebody will pick up we're not going to forget you we're not going to do this we're going to do that i know people that were out of their homes for five years personally know them and i know for a fact it took five to six months to get the funding and now if that were to take place now, that would be a disgrace, Chuck. Harry, it, it would be a disgrace, and, it, and it, I think it goes totally against everything that the American public yeah. voted for this past November. Let me read something to you. This is social media again, and I, I'm happy always to keep my phone on and my platforms open so that when I get a little tone and, and I see something that's relative to exactly what we're discussing. I'm not going to give this person's last name, although on social media his first name and last name are on my Facebook page if you want to see Tom's uh, communication to me. It reads as follows, and I'm going to read it to Chuck so he can comment. Good morning, Harry. You were just talking to your friend Chuck M. on your show about the gas prices. The government tapped 4.5 million barrels of our oil from our reserve last week, which are known as the strategic you know, um, petroleum reserves. It was originally reported 500,000 barrels, and this Good man, Tom, writes in parentheses, probably fake news. Definitely believe and agree with you. It looks like price gouging. I I, want to sort of take it back a little bit because I always wait for Brother Chuck to share a completely dispassionate, you know, real market sort of world reality. And if you've lost 23% of our refinery capacity and you've basically raised the price about 25%, I have to take back that it's gouging. Where I will revisit it, though, Chuck, is if it doesn't come back down after yeah. the refinery capacity is there. You're right, Harry. Price gouging is, as you mentioned, it's like water for eighty nine dollars a case. Correct. But if, if where, where where you had yeah. the inventory there, yeah. And again, I've heard a number of disparaging remarks about that, and I won't pick on the the big box store they got accused because they said they sold water at the counter for a dollar 
you know a, a dollar a bottle like you know you pull it out of the out of the refrigerator yeah. refrigerated section yeah right in the checkout area and you know you pay for it because it's convenient now so if you go and you can get that same bottle in a case of 24 or 28 for like 10 cents a bottle so i, I guess if you go so let's say you pay say a dollar and yeah. you and you have average what 24 bottles i'm assuming in this case it's a lot to be said from going from um, two ninety nine or three ninety nine or five ninety nine to twenty four dollars to sixty dollars. So, Harry, I think you you were absolutely uh, spot on when you made the the comment and, uh, about the the refinery capacity. Um, you know, with it being down, and and again, it's a, it's a matter of economics, supply and demand. And let me say this, one this other is, this, fair thing, excuse, Chuck. Excuse me. This is okay. this is this is I think more temporary than yep. anything else, and I'm 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 pretty certain that those prices will you know will come down. Um, but as you say, though, they won't come down as fast as they went up. And here's another fair comment that I want to squeeze in because I think it fits right here and now, Chuck. Then you get your closing comment. Is it is this? While you lose that percentage of your refinery capability, you never get it back because once you have your you know, Correct. capability back because we're going. We have so we we have not opened a new refinery since Reagan, I think, Chuck. No, nowhere. Yeah. So if you lose that for a period of months, just because now you're back open and you can now produce at the level you did before, you did lose all of that time. So, so Harry, I guess the question is, you know, where do we go from here? You know, we we are now. Summer is over uh, in the throes of the third quarter. You're going to see earnings come, you know, basically in a month or so, uh, five weeks to report the, you know, Q, uh, you know, the third quarter. And we had a very, very strong start in the equity markets, as you know. Um, so global equity markets have stalled somewhat here in the, in the past month or so. As I mentioned to you before, August was just up ever so slightly. Um September typically is not a great month. You know, you know, we've talked about, you know, the decline of the US dollar. We've talked about, you know, different, you know, food prices, uh, and commodities. They they have been somewhat mixed over the last, you know, 4 to 6 weeks. A lot to do politically. Um, you know, we think overall, you know, the markets still seem to be somewhat upbeat and positive. Uh, but growth might be a little more tougher to get to only because when you start comparing, and you mentioned this not too long ago, it wasn't just Q2 and Q1, but now the comps, when you start comparing Q3 yep. 2016 versus Q3 2017, those numbers will be a little bit tougher to you know, to achieve on a you know on a comparative basis, I don't I don't think you're going to be up eight percent. You'd probably be up maybe two. But that's and, Chuck, and, and, and Harry, yeah. that's still not so bad. That's right. And I don't want to get too far ahead because we still have the rest of the third quarter and we have the whole fourth quarter left. But next year becomes crazy time USA because that's the midterm election, the first it's, midterm yeah. election of a new president. We're always in American history, seemingly with rare exception. The president in power loses seats. So you can imagine the political atmosphere is going to be absolutely psychedelic. And, and you know, we do have time to get a, f- a, a few critical things accomplished. And if we get these items accomplished, like tax reform. Because what's going to happen next year, I agree. This year is – it's a moral imperative. It's an absolute necessity to get as much done this year as possible because starting next year, right after the new year – the other side is going to become more strident, more obstruction, uh, because they don't want success to happen. They want power back. Absolutely. And in fairness, and we're being nonpartisan here, not even bipartisan, the other side does the same thing. So, Harry, I flipped the script here for a second because summer's over. Um, start of football is this weekend, actually Thursday. Thursday. With the and, New and England Patriots playing at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. And, and I am and I'm looking the, on the your, reigning defending uh, champion, and I am the only uh, person that has ever won the Malamud football pool, both regular season and playoff season. Harry, someone took 
I, I took it down in honor of the new season, Chuck, because I oh, believe you're maybe that, going to frame that or something. Well, it's in my it's in my briefcase. Okay, I don't want you to lose that. Oh now. no no no! Because it I, might not it might not be happening again. Hey, listen, Chuck. I I you know I said it last year. <laughs> that is probably a once and forever accomplishment to win either, let alone to win both. Um, Harry, you got your work cut out for you. That's but I am sure your re- well. They're all out to get me, Chuck. I'm your reigning defending <laughs> champion, so it's tough. I have a lot of work to do. Let's see. Yeah, my man. For all of your financial planning needs, turn to the official financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program, Chuck Malamut, the Malamut Group, Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office, 609-383-2010, the Baron uh, champion, Chuck Malamut. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Chuck, we'll see you next week. Harry, thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by Simplify Medical's clinical trial for spinal disc replacement. Visit SimplifyTrial.com. If you've ever wanted to drive an electric vehicle, well, now's your chance with Atlantic County Utilities Authority Drive Electric event on September 12th. Here to tell us all about it is President of the ACUA, Rick Dovey. It's an opportunity for people to uh, experience what electric vehicles are all about. They can actually take a test drive, see, ask questions of the owners and operators of these vehicles. What are some of the benefits of owning an electric vehicle? Well, first of all, there's no emissions. And then there's an economic uh, benefit because uh, electric vehicles have many less moving parts and things that so maintenance costs are seriously less expensive. So this is coming up on Tuesday, September 12th at the ACUA Wind Farm. Right, in Atlantic City at 12 noon. Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by Simplify Medical's clinical trial for spinal disc replacement. Visit SimplifyTrial.com. Hi, it's Mark Levin. Join me at 6 this evening. Now back to the mayor of the morning, Harry Hurley, on WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. And this portion of Hurley in the Morning also brought to us by the Harbor Pines Golf Club, the official, the exclusive golf club for the Hurley in the Morning program. And I am here now calling all new members, inviting you, for a Hurley Bird discount, plus six months free. There's seven-day individual memberships. And keep in mind, it's the best golf membership in South Jersey. Buy now and prepare to be inspired because they really pull out all the stops for you. If you buy the seven-day individual membership. Now, remember, Alan Greenman and the entire team, the Gerwick's family, they all understand that not everyone is going to take the seven-day individual membership it could be you have a multi jobs you know just your schedule makes it that you're only available at certain times so i'm going to give the seven-day membership details now but keep in mind when you give alan greenman a call 609-927-0006 or stop by 500 st andrews drive you can certainly check out all these details as well on the World Wide Web at HarborPines.com. I'm giving you the seven-day membership. It's an early bird special, new members only. It's discounted, plus up to six months free. And you'll see there's all kinds of uh, information associated with this new membership plan. It's their most coveted membership at Harbor Pines for the avid golfer because you have unlimited golf seven days a week with no time restrictions, You pay only a $25 card fee each time you play. So you you paid your membership, so there's no per-round fee or any of that. Your benefits include unlimited range balls anytime you play or practice, 90-day advanced tee times, and 24-7 online booking capability, a $100 bonus gift card to use anywhere in the club. You'll have your own locker with your own nameplate, free USGA handicap service, and club storage, billing privileges, discounted Guest rates, 10% pro shop discount, 15% grill room discount, and invitation to private member events at Harbor Pines. When you call 609-927-0006, tell the general manager, Alan Greenman, that I, Hurley in the Morning, sent you. When we come back, wide open forum, but what I'm going to open up with is, in my estimation, it takes today's cat's meow. I didn't get a chance to say to mention this to Chuck Malamud, but get a load of this. I'm going to just name names. New Jersey Monthly, twice a year, they rate 513 cities in our great state in terms of number one, 
Number 513 would be dead last in terms of best place to live in our state. Wait till you hear how Atlantic and Cape May County fares. 104.1 104.1 WPGG Atlantic City WSJO 104.9 HD2 Egg Harbor City Everything you need to know in six minutes starts now She grew up fast I'm Dave Anthony Fox News and Irma is about as powerful as a hurricane can get and people in Florida are getting ready We've seen the impact of Harvey so I think it's definitely made a change for us Fox's Evan Brown is tracking Irma live in Miami Yeah, Dave, Hurricane Hunter aircraft now tell us Irma's top sustained winds are 175 miles an hour. That's squarely into Category 5, and it's matching the strongest recorded winds of Hurricane Andrew.